let's break some antenna paradigms today. And I've been living with a paradigm that I can only have a 30 foot long wire station reference antenna. Over the last several months, I've broken that paradigm and I've got something to share with you today. Why would this be all I could do? Well, if you're like me and you live in a community, a neighborhood, a geographical area that's been developed for the last 40 to 60 years, you might be used to things that are heavily populated and the lots are tiny. I never thought I would have lived in some place like this 40 years ago. My lot was 2.6 acres out in the country, and that was small compared to all my neighbors. And here I am 40 some years later, and I'm perfectly happy with this setup. Less to maintain, less to care for, and I've got good neighbors all around me. To each his own. My point is, some of you live on small lots and you can't get up a long wire antenna, or so you think. Maybe you don't define 73 feet as long, but 73 feet doesn't fit on my yard, <laughs> but it does now. We'll go through that. Maybe you just want something that's simple. Maybe you have acres of property, but you don't want something that's heavy maintenance. So you want to keep it in a very confined space. This might be for you. And last but not least, I live in a home governed by a homeowners association. So having something small footprint that just disappears, a wire into the thin air, people can't see it. And this would be another reason why you might want to go with this small form factor antenna. So let me show you right now what this antenna looks like in its finished condition, and then we'll come back and go through the process as to how we got here. Of course, I'll give you build tips along the way. I'll show you how I did this. That's what you've come to expect from me. Right now, I want to give you an overview so you can springboard off of my ideas to create something different for you, or you can just match what I've done. On the bottom left-hand corner of the back of my house is a beige polymer box. It just blends into the home. It's a utility box. It looks like it belongs there. Inside of it is a Cha Hybrid Mini. It's a 500 watt SSB, 100 watt CW, 50 watt digital, four to one matching unit from Chameleon Antenna. You can use anybody's product you want. I just choose to use Chameleon Antenna because of their quality and performance. I then had a 30 foot wire going to the top of my portamast. That was my paradigm for a couple of years. Now, because the wire is disappearing, you can't see that it now runs from the top of the portamast down here to just to the left-hand side of the window. That's the 73-foot wire configuration. In other words, it is a sloping inverted V. You won't find that configuration anywhere in any of the antenna manuals, but that's what I have a sloping inverted V. And it allowed me to do something that was non-traditional, but yet it still works. QSL 59 Plus down here in Florida. Thanks for picking me up. 73. Right, you, Have a good night, WB4 IT. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Again, please. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Um, I think I recognize that call. Are you the uh, YouTube guy? <laughs> HOA Ham, that's me. You're 57 Tampa, Florida. Five five year and I watch all your videos. So uh, keep up the good work and thanks for the call. Thank you, seventy three, and have a blast. Seventy three, this is WB four IT. I turned the radio to 40 meters last night and started chasing POTA. That gent had a massive pileup going on and I was able to break through with my non-traditional antenna. Listen, I'm redundant. Some of you have heard me say this now a hundred times. Put antennas up the way they're intended. Don't mess around with your antennas. Buy the best antenna you can afford or can make and then put it up like you're supposed to. Follow the manufacturers or the textbook's instructions. Don't be cavalier. But if you can't put it up like that, don't crawl back in your shack going, woe is me, I can't make contacts. Use the space you have and come up with something that's just a little different and give it a try. I've actually made 80 meter FT8 contacts with this configuration. Of course, everything higher than that was a piece of cake. So later on in the video, I'll share those statistics with you along with my whisper maps, which you've come to expect. Now let's talk about how we built this antenna. It's really something old is new again. I installed this two years ago. That polymer box, that's been on the side of the house for a couple of years, but I've changed the configuration up significantly. And now instead of 30 feet, I have a 73 foot wire. Let me show you how I did it. Maybe you already have a mast or a tree or some other structure in your backyard. I needed a pivot point to get this 73 foot wire and it's my portamast. 
it is a telescoping mast from Chameleon that I've converted over to a flagpole. In my HOA, I'm allowed to have a flagpole, so I hang my wire from this portamast slash flagpole. That tiny little white dot that you see there, that's the concrete sleeve that houses my portamast. It can withstand a significant amount of wind, and anytime I want to go portable, I can collapse that 20-foot portamast in about mm, 30 seconds or less and take it with me in the back of my truck to go play radio portable. I don't know if you can tell, but going west to east, there's a little line here. That is not a flaw in whatever satellite is spying on me. That's actually probably around 10 or 10.30 in the morning. The sun is in the east, shining towards the west, and that's the shadow of my portamast being thrown. Let me just quickly show you how I put this portamast in the ground, then we'll get to the configuration of the wire itself. Because the portamast is central to all the applications for me in the HOA with a wire antenna, remember I can put a flag on it and it's a mast where the wire just disappears, I decided to put a permanent concrete sleeve in the backyard. And I don't think I've ever created a playlist for the portamast, but because I use it so much, I'm going to do that. I'll leave it in the description below of all the videos that kind of showcase the portamast because I also take it on the go. You can put this in a trailer hitch receiver. You can have a drive on mount. There are a number of different ways that you can use this both at your QTH as well as portable. So I've decided to simplify the vid just a bit and get out here and show you. This is the polymer box I'm talking about. And there's enough space in here to store my wire. So if I need to quickly take down the portamast and wrap up my wire, it just all goes right into here. So there we can see we've got the box and the wire is just going to go up to the very top of the portamast. And because I have that piece of bungee at the very top, the flag stays away from the wire. Very rarely does my flag ever fly north, so it doesn't hit that wire. Let's go to the back side of the portamast. And now we're going to go to the other end of the house where you can probably begin to see the wire. And here is the wire attached to the house. All makes sense now, doesn't it? It is a sloping inverted V multi-banded antenna and it's working phenomenally for me. How did I end up with a paradigm of a 30 foot wire and what helped me to break that paradigm? Well, having an antenna in the backyard, I can't really go side to side between the property lines because I don't have anything on the side property lines to hang a wire. And if I put a flagpole there, it would just be a little bit odd. So we decided to put the flagpole, I should say the portamast slash flagpole in the middle or to the one side of the property in the backyard in a location where it looked natural where we could have an event, a picnic, and that flagpole looks like it belongs there. Based on where my property lines are, how far that flagpole is from the house, geometry forced me into a 30 foot long wire. It was planned out. So I could have, you know, potentially run something from the back of the house out to the road. And for a long period of time, I did. I had a 73 foot wire that went up into a tree. The problem is while the wire would disappear, the birds that perched on that wire that kind of hovered in midair without flapping their wings, they didn't disappear. They attracted far too much attention by, you know, as people walked by. So we had to scrap that idea. So 30 foot wire it is. The first reason why it's as low as it is on the back of the house, geometry. The second reason, you know, for those of you who've said, man, someone's going to trip over that wire. Someone's going to clothesline themselves in that wire. Why would you do that? Well, you've heard my answer. Geometry forced it to it's private property. Nobody should be walking around on my back porch. My wife and I don't use that back porch. We have another side of the house in the back that has a concrete porch. We have a porch on the front of our home. So when she and I decide to stop walking a couple of miles a day or riding 30 miles uh, on our bikes over the weekend, well, we'll figure out which porch we want to sit on, but it's not going to be this one because I've got that wire there. So I'm not worried about anybody getting close 
hose lined or tripping over that wire. As a matter of fact, if you're trespassing to my property, trust me, I have other surprises for you. The least of your worries is being clotheslined by a PTFE uh, copper uh, wire that has the Kevlar wire going through it as well. It's a strong antenna wire, which is again, another reason why I use Chameleon. This wire that I have strung up in the backyard here on the portamast in an inverted um, sloping V, that wire will not stretch. It's going to last forever. So that's how I ended up in my 30 foot paradigm and how I got out of that paradigm was, you know that I like to test and play with antennas. That's a lot of what I do on the channel. I try to demonstrate for people how to use various antennas. I do testing for a primarily two manufacturers. So I'm always showing new antennas and I have been dying to do a video on the Chameleon Cha LEFS 8010. It's a resonant antenna. No tuner required, but how on earth am I going to get that up on my small lot? Well, I thought to myself, I tell people all of the time, stop whining, get creative, bend your wire a little bit and see what happens. When I put that thing up, it operated phenomenally. And it started at the red dot, which is my portamast. There is the approximate location of my portamast. So the LEF S10 started right here with the matching unit elevated 20 feet high on the portamast. And then my wire basically went and took a, a hard left and went almost all the way out to halfway through the front yard. Too noticeable to leave up here in the HOA. If you're in an HOA where you can hide that LEF S8010, oh my goodness, fantastic antenna. But this started me down a whole new path. All right, Bob. What else can you do? I mean, what about if you took the LEFS 8010 and you attached it to the house where your current utility box is and then took it up and kind of snaked it around the portamast? Well, now I'm at, um, let's see, 63. Uh, it's in two sections, the LEFS 8010. I think it's a 63 section and a 67 section, perhaps, something like that. And all of a sudden I realized it didn't really matter what I did. I still would end up with wire in my front yard and I don't have anything that I can suspend it from that wouldn't be obvious. But that kept my mind going. I own a MCOM3 portable, which is a 73 foot wire portable antenna that's also multi-banded. So I screwed it into the windowsill, I should say the side of the window, right above that utility box and ran it up in this same configuration that I'm showing today. And it worked phenomenally. And then I realized, you know what, Bob, you've got a 73 foot wire that came with your M pass two. Why don't you go ahead and get out the wire bin and pull out that 73 foot piece of wire, attach it to the Cha mini that's right there in that utility box and create an inverted sloping V. That's where this was born. And that's how I got out of my 30 foot paradigm. And now I have a 73 foot long wire that is allowing me to make contacts all around the world. It fits in a small lot. If that's your predicament, if you want small for minimal maintenance, it'll fit that requirement. If you live in an HOA, it just disappears. It is a 73 foot wire, even though it says 71. That was my mistake when I made that winder to go in the bin. And then this goes on top of my portamast topper so I can just clip and unclip this wire anytime I need to take the portamast down. Just a quick tip for those of you who use this kind of mast, whether it's the Chameleon portamast or some other one, keep the mast down while you attach the wire on its two extreme ends. This wire has polymer rings. I presume they're Delrin. I don't know. They're super strong. One provides uh, strain relief right at the utility box. One is attached to the house with some stretch cord, shock cord, and then the third one floats across the entire length of the wire. That's what's attached to this bungee, actually. Right here is this bungee that I made. So the bungee is attached to this ring, which is on top of the portamass topper. And then the antenna um, ring that slides up and down the full length of the 73 is attached to this piece of bungee on the top of the portamast. And again, I had a little bit of bungee left to attach it to the house. Let's go see how this thing operates. Here's a look at PSK Reporter on 10 meters, 20, 40, and 80 after 15 minutes of operating 
on each band at the appropriate time of day. And yep, you heard me right. I made FT8 contacts on 80 meters on this compromised antenna, compromised in its configuration. And then jumping on over to Whisper 10, 12, 15, and 17, I ran this for 24 hours. 20, 30, 40, and 80 meters. And all the bands combined for 24 hours, it's a phenomenal and impressive looking whisper map how many stations were hearing me transmit. Final suggestions and thoughts. Always think about your use case. If I was putting up some temporary antenna, I might use garbage cheap wire for this if I was just testing. If I was doing a video today on the best wire for radials. I would actually give you three types of wire to use depending on what you're trying to accomplish. But when I talk about using the best materials your money can afford, whether you're home brewing or buying a commercial antenna, I guess it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. This is now my station reference antenna. It's going to be up month after month after month in the summer sun of Tampa Bay, the constant wind of the thunderstorms that blow through here, the constant rain. So I want some of the best wire that can withstand that type of abuse and not stretch like cheap speaker wire. So I guess it's all about use case, but understand why I do make the recommendations that I do. I'm thinking permanent here. And so I want the best materials that I can possibly get my hands on. I also talk about making sure you follow manufacturer's specifications and installation instructions. There is no manufacturer that suggests a sloping inverted V. Always use your antennas the way they are designed to be deployed. But if you can't, just try some minor variations and experiment. Use some whisper maps. Just get on single sideband and see if you can break through a pileup like I did there on 40 meters. Test it on FT8. All of these modes are out there so we can test our various deployments. That's the beauty of all the methods. I'm a single sideband guy. That's what I like to do. I've learned FT8. I'm just eh, at it. I've tackled Whisper. That's all about testing antennas so I can look at as many modes as possible and make sure that it's working. Again, use my ideas as a springboard for your specific needs and application. Talk to you soon, friend. 73.